this video is about the transformation reflection. Reflection is another word for a mirror or a flip. You might have heard those words before. Reflections will change position, so we have a change in position. So if I were to flip my hand, my part of my hand would change its position because part of it's moving. So that's how you know it's changing in position. There is a change in orientation. In orientation means the way it's pointing. So if I were to flip my hand over, my fingers are pointing up and my thumb is pointing left. So as I flip it over, my fingers are still pointing up, but my thumb is now pointing to the right. So there is a change in orientation. Even if it's only one part of it, there is some part of change in orientation. Now, as it flips, the figures are still the same size. I'm not making my hand get bigger or smaller, and I'm not changing the shape of it. So these are the figures are isometric. which again means that they are congruent. The pre-image and image are congruent to each other. Now, reflections will create symmetry, so it's a mirror of each other. You're going to find the mirrored coordinates. So in words, we're going to have description as the words. There are four very specific lines that have rules. So we're going to be reflecting over four very specific lines. So to reflect over. The four lines that we're going to look at are the x-axis, the y-axis, the line y equals x, and the diagonal line y equals negative x. Now in words what you do, so if you understand the words you can do this to the coordinates and not have to uh, worry about knowing the mapping rule. You should know the mapping rule, but if you know the words, you can create the mapping rule. So in order to reflect over the x-axis, you actually negate the y values. Now to negate, what that really means is that you're going to change the sign. So negate means change signs. That does not mean just make negative. If the number, if the y value is positive, it does become negative. But if the y value was negative, it then becomes positive. You actually have to change the sign only on that one, on that one coordinate or that one part of the coordinate. So you have to make sure you do it to all of the coordinates of the figure, but only to the y value. Now, if we're going to reflect over the y-axis, so since they're the axis, they actually are very similar. If we're going to reflect over the y-axis, we're going to negate the x values. We're going to, again, negate means to change the signs. We're going to negate the x values. So the x-axis, just as a quick little reference, if I wanted to reflect over the x-axis, I would be making my point go down or up which is what's changing, why the y values are changing. If I want to reflect it over the y axis, if my point's right here, and I go over the y axis, I'm moving left and right. That's why my x values are changing. So these two lines, y equals x and y equals negative x, are diagonal lines. They go through the origin, and we're going to reflect over those diagonal lines. You can reflect over other diagonal lines as well, but these have very specific rules. So to flip over the line y equals x is you flip the x and y values. You just take the x and y values where they are now and then just flip them to the other sides. So they don't change signs, they just you actually just make the numbers flip. For y equals negative x, the diagonal going negative is you do the same thing, you flip, but you also, so flip and negate x and y values. So this time you have to both flip them so the numbers will flip position. 
but then they also have to change signs. So if you have positive x's, you're, you'll have negative. And if you have positive y's, you'll have negative. Again, if you have negative, they become positive. Now, reflection, again, is just a mirrored image. So you, if you don't know the rules, you can still reflect because all reflecting is is just mirroring it to the other side of the basically the axis of symmetry. So if you were to reflect over any other lines, so including horizontal and vertical lines, so I'm put a little note here. If you're going to reflect over other vertical or horizontal lines, all you really have to do is count. That's all reflection is, is counting the distance from the pre-image to the line of reflection, which again is the axis of symmetry, to the line of reflection, and mirror on the other side. In quadratics, you do this when you are finding the mirror of the y-intercept. You just count to the axis of symmetry and then mirror it to the other side. This is reflection. So you might have been doing reflections for a while, and it's just understanding the rules of it now. So as a quick note to remind us what vertical lines look like, vertical lines and how you know it's a vertical line. Vertical line we know goes up and down. But the equation to know that you're reflecting over a vertical line is when it says x equals a number. It doesn't say y equals x. It doesn't say x-axis. It says x equals a number. For the horizontal, if it's a horizontal line, we know that it's going to go left and right. So you'll just count up and down for it. But this is a y equals a number. There's a difference. These are y equals x. These have both letters. These are diagonal lines right here. Y equals a number is the horizontal line at that Y value. So you would go to Y equals the number and draw a horizontal line. Y equals X is starting at 0, 0, and you're going up and over. Up and right for positive, up and left for negative. So you have to understand that this is Y equals X, which is a diagonal line. This is Y equals a number, which is Y is a horizontal line. So you can still count. You can also count with diagonal lines. The difference with diagonal lines is if you have a di if you are counting on a diagonal line. I'm gonna show you an example of that real quick. You don't have this is not uh, on the notes, but if you have on a coordinate plane, if you have a diagonal line going positive, so let's say I have a point here, and I want to find the mirror of this, I would count up. So one, two, three, and then I would count, if I want to mirror it, I wouldn't keep going up because I wouldn't mirror it because it's not exact, it's not a horizontal or vertical. So I would have to mirror it by going in a different direction. So instead of going, keep going up, I would have to go either left or right. Now to reflect over this line, if I go right, it's not going to reflect. So I'd have to go left the same amount. So one, two, three, and I would have my reflection. You go from the point to the line of reflection or to whatever it is, and then you count the other way. So if I did the same thing with a negative slope, and I want my coordinate down here, I go one, two, three to the line. And this time, again, if I keep going up, I won't actually reflect over a diagonal. So I have to go either left or right. This time going left wouldn't reflect, so I would have to go right one, two, three then I would have reflection. So these are in the same locations, just on the other side of the line. So I can actually turn this, make this go vertical, and I can see that it's reflected. If I were to fold this piece of paper, it would actually touch it, uh, along that line. So if I had done here, up, and then I kept going up, if I turn my paper vertical, I can see if I were to fold it along this line, this dot would end up hitting over here somewhere, not there. That's why you can't just keep going up and down. So diagonal lines, you actually have to go up and left or up and right.
but on vertical and horizontal, you can just count easily. So just count to the line of reflection and determine which direction you need to go to make it mirror. The next part is the algebraically. Again, this is our mapping rule. So whatever asks for the rule, this is what you're looking for. We're still using these four very specific ones because these are the ones that have the rules. Everything else you can just count, but to know the rules, we're going to still use the x-axis, y-axis, y equals x, and y equals negative x. x-axis, y-axis, y equals x, and y equals negative x. Now to use our, our words, we can actually use our words to create the mapping rule. So now we're going to have our pre-image. It's going to map to. We want to negate the y values, so that means our y values are going to change signs. So our x values aren't touched, so we have our x and then make the y negative, so, or change the sign of the y. Right now it's positive, now it's going to go negative. And that's the mapping rule for the x-axis. The y-axis was to negate the x values, so we have our pre-image maps to. Then we're going to negate the x values, so from the original pre-image, we're going to negate the x's. It's positive, now it becomes negative but we didn't touch the y's, so it's just y. Again, we're going from this pre-image. y equals x, again, we start from our pre-image, x, y, maps to. That rule in words is said to flip the x's and y's, so we're actually just going to flip their locations. So instead of uh, having x first, we're going to have y, and then we'll have x. And that's our mapping rule for y equals x. For y equals negative x, again, we start with our pre-image, always pre-image, maps to, so that arrow. This one said we're going to flip them, but we're also negating both of the x and y value. We have to flip them, so we're going to have our y and our x, but we also have to negate both of them. So we had a positive, now we have a negative, positive, now we have a negative. This is what you do to the, to the coordinates. And you can do them as two separate things. You can flip them and then change the signs, or you can do it all at once. Sometimes it's easier to do them separate times. So a graphic, a graphical representation of this, I'm going to give the pre-image coordinates. Our pre-image coordinates are A is at 1, 1, B is at 4, 2, and C is at 2, 4. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this. We have an X and a Y and we have our scale so we don't have to put anything for that. Our A is at 1, 1, so A Make sure you label as A. B is at 4, 2. And C is at 2, 4. Make sure you label it and connect your points. Again, it's just A, B, and C. They're not prime yet. Now, if I give the rule, I'm going to give the mapping rule of X, Y maps to negative Y, negative X. Question is, what rule is this? So in words, in words, we think about what's happening. The x's and y's have been flipped, and both of them have been have been changed signs. So that is the reflect over the line y equals negative x. So then words it's reflect over y equals negative x. So to do our coordinates, so do our coordinates, we would want to flip them and then negate them. So a prime. Flip them first will be 1, 1, and then we have to negate both of them, so they both become negative. B prime, we flip them first, it will become 2 and 4, and then we have to negate both of them, so they both become negative, because they were both originally positive. And then C prime, we flip them first, so it's 4, 2, then we have to negate both of them. They're both positive, they both become negative. And now we can graph these. So negative 1, negative 1 is A prime. A prime. B prime is at negative 2, negative 4. B prime. And C prime is at negative 4, negative 2. Go ahead and connect your coordinates. And now we can see if they are reflected. We said it was reflected over the line y equals negative x. So if I draw my y equals negative x, it goes to the origin. Right one, down one, right one, down one. I can just draw this line in there. Up one, left one. Up one, left one. So I have a diagonal line. And I can check to see if my 
diagonal line is how I should reflect it. So if I use my A, I actually go to the green line is down 1, 2, and then I have to go in a different direction, so I would go left to 1, 2, and it does work. It ends on A prime. If I do B, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So B to B prime also is true. The property is how you actually prove that it is in fact a transformation, it is in fact a reflection. The property for reflection state that the segment A, A prime, so again connect A to A prime, B, B prime, and C, C prime are parallel. So those lines are parallel. And the line of reflection the line of reflection, the axis of symmetry, is the perpendicular, which is this symbol, perpendicular bisector of AA prime, segment AA prime, BB prime, and CC prime. It has to do it for all of them. So what that means, perpendicular, perpendicular goes back to slope, opposite reciprocal slopes, and then bisector means it actually cuts it in half, so you would actually look at midpoint for that. So if we come back to this problem right here, we want to see if they're parallel. So if we were to connect C to C prime, A to A prime, and B to B prime. So from C to C prime, we go down, so we have down 4, down 6, and then we go left 6. So down 6, left 6, so rise around the 6 over negative 6 is negative 1. A to A prime, down 2, left 2. Also 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. And B to B prime, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Down 6, left 6. So that's actually, sorry, it was actually a positive 1, I apologize. From down, down is negative and left is negative. So these are actually all positive 1. So the slopes are all positive, all parallel, sorry. A prime, B prime, C prime are parallel. Now we have to look at the line of reflection. And is it the perpendicular bisector of A prime, B prime, and C prime? So perpendicular. We already know the slopes is a positive one of all three of these lines. So now to look at the slope of the line of reflection, which is that y equals negative x. This slope is down one right one. That is a negative one. Now perpendicular is opposite reciprocal, so opposite. We had a positive one. We had a positive one. Positive one. And then our slope for our line of reflection is negative one. Opposite means you change the sign, so we have the opposites, positive to negative. Reciprocal is when you flip the fraction. So 1 over 1, when you flip it, becomes 1 over 1 again. So these are opposite reciprocals. So this is perpendicular. So, so far we have the parallel, the, original, the three are parallel, the line of reflection is perpendicular, but is it a bisector? We need to know if it cuts it in half. Basically, if we were to connect these, to get to the line, we have to go diagonally 1, diagonally 1. So that is in the middle of this line. We go from B to B prime, we can do the same thing. We would find, you could find the midpoint, the midpoint of B, B prime. So B is at coordinate 4, 2, and we said B prime was at coordinate negative 2, negative 4. Midpoint is when you add the x's and divide by 2. So, and add the y's and divide by 2. So we have 4 plus a negative 2 from here. Divide by 2, which is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, comma. We'll have the 2 plus a negative 4 over 2, which is 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Divide by 2 is negative 1, so 1, negative 1. 1, negative 1 is the coordinate, and that would be the middle of BB prime. We could do the same thing with CC prime. The midpoint from there would be at negative 1, positive 1. So it is, in fact, a perpendicular bisector.
That's how you can prove the property. It's how you prove that this is, in fact, a reflection. If you were to be given these two images, pre-image and image, you can actually determine if this is, in fact, a reflection. Because if I were to have moved it over more or too far, then it would not have been a true reflection, and you would say that no, the reflection had not happened.